Hi, this is Mike McGowan, and thanks to those wonderful people at the United Way of Door County, today we get to talk about stress. Now, everybody has it, everybody's stressed. When I go to schools and I ask, how many of you feel like you're stressed? Everybody's hand goes up. I don't think I've done an assembly where everybody's hand doesn't go up in a long, long time. Well, what does that mean? Where does our stress come from? Stress comes from just the way we live our lives. <clears throat> Almost all of us are experiencing this at a variety of different times in a variety of different locations. School can cause stress. Having too many balls up in the air to juggle causes stress. If you're out for the school play and you have a homework assignment that's done and you have a project that's due and you're supposed to be doing this in a club sport, all of a sudden school creates this tremendous amount of stress. Home creates stress. For those of you who live in less than an ideal circumstance, Listening to your parents argue cause stress. Having tension comes stress. Listening to what, what's going on with brothers and sisters can sometimes cause stress. When I was a kid, my mom used to say, every time she heard a police siren, she would say, oh, I wonder if that's your dad. That raised my stress. Isn't that a lousy thing to say? But all she was doing was she was saying, this causes me stress. And I was, she was getting it out without realizing her kids were listening to her. Parents sometimes cause stress on kids without even realizing it. Relationships cause stress. Our friends are our friends. But many of us know, sometimes they tease you or get on you and at the wrong time. And it causes problems for us, or we worry about it, or it doesn't help us a lot. There's a variety of different things that cause stress, but the real key is, what do we do about it? Now, I'm not gonna tell you anything probably that you don't already know, but I bet you don't do them because that's part of the problem with stress is we let it eat us up from the inside out without doing what we need to do. It's as though if you had a disease and you were choosing not to listen to what the doctor said and then say, well, why am I still sick? Because you're not listening. First, when you're in middle school and you're in high school, you need to get sleep. I know, I know. That doesn't mean that you need to be in bed at eight. That means you need to get sleep. The way the body works is sometimes when you're in middle school and high school, you can't fall asleep at eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night. How many of you lay in bed at night and just think your brain turns on and it starts spinning around and around and around and around and you're trying to work stuff out? It is important, just like when you were a little kid, to have somewhat of a routine. I know you're not gonna like this, but turn the cell phones off at least an hour before you want to go to bed. If you're scrolling through it and you're checking it while you're laying in bed, your mind is thinking about everything on the social media as well as the blue light. It's not doing anything to your brain. It's triggering mechanisms in your brain that say stay awake. In middle school, they say you should be getting at least 10 hours of sleep a night. When I go to schools and I say how many of you got at least 10 hours of sleep, almost no one raises their hand. In high school, it's even worse. You, we all know what it's like when we're not sleeping, right? We are stressed, we're crabby, we're not getting as much done. We need to be able to get enough rest to make sure that our body's mechanisms kick in so that it can battle the stress that we have. Second, this is huge, we need to get exercise. There's a strong correlation between exercise and stress. When we're sitting on the couch, eating a bunch of Pringles, watching a lot of TikTok, our levels aren't great. If we're outside, if we're exercising, if we're lifting, skateboarding, running, bicycling, whatever you do for exercise, your body releases chemicals that actually help treat the stress that we're all under. Remember when we talked about anxiety, that fight or flight or freeze? Well, one of the chemicals that's released says flight means go. That's good for your body to have that happen. Exercise is critical and along with exercise, get outside. Outside is huge. We now know that about a half an hour a day, just a half an hour, I know we live in Wisconsin, but winter, fall, summer, spring, I think we have those four seasons still, don't we? Or do we just have winter and three months in the summer? 
it's important that the sunlight hits the largest organ in your body, your skin. It triggers a reaction that helps your immune system, helps your stress reduction, helps your mood, just being outside, regardless of the weather, absorbing that sunlight actually helps. I think you probably know what's coming next, don't you? What are you eating? Sometimes I go to schools and I say, how many of you ate breakfast this morning? And about half the kids in middle school raise their hand. And they'll say, how many of you had a good breakfast? And there are some that will volunteer what they had. How many of you had a lousy breakfast? And I hear lots of lousy stuff for breakfast, right? We need to be feeding ourselves on a regular basis to also allow our bodies to replenish themselves, allow our brains to work effectively, all of it. Exercise, sleep, eat well, get outside. Now those are the givens, aren't they? Those are the givens, we know those. What I want you to do is I want you to sit down and I want you to say to yourself, what causes me stress? Actually write it down. What things stress you out? And then also ask yourself, what can I do about those things? Now, let's just take the four we just talked about and say, let's, I'm gonna assume you're doing those. What can we do about some of the others? I'll give you an example. If certain individuals at your school are causing you stress, the first thing I would say about that is try to avoid them. Now, some of your schools, maybe you can't. Others, you can. You don't have to hang around with people all of the time. You can choose to eat lunch at a different table. You can choose to walk down a different hallway. If somebody is causing you stress, every time you walk down one hallway, walk down a different one as a part of that. Try to avoid those things that stress you out and people that stress you out. It works a lot like fears. One of my fears, and it happened since I was a little kid, I'm afraid of snakes. A while back I had a teacher in a school, she was keeping snakes in her classroom. And she said, oh, I can get you over that fear. Come on in my classroom, I'll have you hold a snake. No, I didn't need to do that. I can stay away from that thing which causes me fear. I can stay away from that thing that causes me stress. Some parents I know choose to not drive on the freeway. It makes their trips longer when they go somewhere, but that stresses them out to be in that fast traffic. So they choose to not do it. That's a terrific way to handle it. If you can avoid that which makes you stressed, avoid it. There's a young man that I know who would tell me that he would check out how the cars are parked when he got home from school because that would tell him whether or not he was going to interact with his parents because he knew by how the cars were parked in the driveway and on the street whether his parents were in a good mood or a bad mood, whether they were rushed, whether they were angry. If he ever saw them come home, and he said once he saw his dad come home, scream around the corner, pull in the driveway, throw the truck into gear, he knew he was in a bad mood. He knew, I don't need to deal with this right now. He avoided it, went upstairs, went into his room. Until things calmed down, he didn't need to be in the middle of it. If you have headphones and you can listen to music, when your parents are arguing or you can go outside and take a bite ride, you don't have to be there. You don't have to be in the middle of everything to know what's going on. You don't have to know what's going on. We just have to know how it's going to end, don't we? And they'll let us know when that time is appropriate. So the point of that is to try to avoid things that stress you out when it's possible. Second, know what works for you. Now, you need lots of tools in your tool belt. There's a lot of kids who tell me exercise does work for them, but very specific. There's others that say listening to their music helps them do a stress. Others who say journaling helps them get their feelings and thoughts out. Still others say they like to write, they like to do poetry or create songs, play music for themselves if they have an instrument. Know what works for you to lower your blood pressure and to lower your own heart rate. It's as simple as this. If you're looking at me now and you want to do this and you take a deep breath and hold it and then slowly let it out and you do it again and you do it a third time, I guarantee you your blood pressure goes down and your heart rate goes down. The other day I was in the doctor's office 
I don't like being in the doctor's office. They took my blood pressure. It was a little high. I said, can we do it again in 30 seconds? And the, the nurse looked at me and said, sure. And she started talking, I said, shh. And I just sat there with my hands in my lap. And I breathed real slowly, took about four breaths. She took my blood pressure again, I'm not kidding, less than a minute later. And it was down by at least 20 points. And she said, oh, it's normal now. I'm like, thank you, I just don't like being here. I don't know why they don't do that for absolutely everybody. It works. If we're stressed and we know what works for us, then we need to make that a regular part of our life. I'll tell you something that is difficult for young people to learn to do, even though it feels good when we do it. When I ask you, if I stand in your hallway and I listen to you, would I hear more compliments between the kids or criticism? What would you say? Would I hear more praise or put downs? And this one I love asking. Would I hear more encouragement or sarcasm? Now, you may think, oh, we're just fooling around. What does it do to you? The stream of negativity does affect us. It affects us mentally. It affects our energy level. It affects how we view our environment. There's a school that I went to where the kids decided to put post-it notes on each of the lockers saying a positive thing. They did it all by themselves. School didn't ask them to do it. They took a picture of it and sent it to me. I said, that's awesome. Two weeks later, I got a picture of that same hallway with the post-it notes. And the kid said, I just wanted you to see my, our hallway. And I sent him an email back. I said, oh, I saw that. Your counselor sent it to me two weeks ago. And he said, he sent me an email back. He said, no, Mr. McGowan, that's our hallway today. I wanted you to know that nobody has taken those positive statements down. They put them at the eye level of where kids would look at them every day. It is science. It is a fact that if you write down three things that you're grateful for and that you appreciate every day, and that if you do that on a regular basis, just say, what am I grateful for today? The sun is shining. The temperature is beginning to warm up. The flowers are blooming. Those are three right there. If I simply write those three down and I do it again and again and again, after 30 days, they can measure the changes in your immune system, in your stress levels, in your blood pressure, in your heart rate. People who express gratitude and optimism tend to experience far less stress than those people who swim in the lake of negativity. That makes sense, because we all see it all the time, don't we? You all know somebody who's really angry all the time. They carry their stress like a big backpack full of bricks, and you can see it on them. And many of us say, I don't want to be like that. Take the backpack off. Take the negativity out and choose to be optimistic. There's a last one I want to leave you with. When we're stressed, sometimes it works like blinders. We can't see to the sides of us. Sometimes we get this scattered vision where everything seems to be coming at us all at once and we, don't even, we can't even think. It is really important that everyone in their life has at least one, if not two or three people that they can talk to. It would be great if it's a brother, sister, or a parent. That'd be great. But I've spent my life working with people who didn't have that available to them. If you have one of your parents you can talk to, that's great. If you're able to say to your parents, hey, could you please not yell right now? If you feel like you can be that assertive, that's great. But a lot of us can't. If you can say, I'm a little stressed out today. Can I talk to you about it? I just need you to listen. Don't solve it for me. I just need you to listen. That can be anyone, an older brother or sister who's moved out of the house, a cousin, an aunt, an uncle, a coach, a teacher, a counselor, a custodian. 
one of the secretaries at your school. It can be anybody. If we have somebody we can talk about, talk to, about the stuff that's worrying us, they can help us either problem solve it or just listen to us. It feels great to get it off your chest. Because by doing that, we take some of the magic out of it and try not to let it worry us that much. So let's review. When we're stressed, whether it's home, school, relationships, whatever it is, let's set a routine for ourselves. The routine involves, how can I get better sleep? How can I fill my body with a little better food? How can I get regular exercise and be outside? And then let's fill our lives with positivity and recognize those good things that are happening around us all the time. Doesn't mean we're not gonna be able to problem solve the bad things, just means we're recognizing them. And then let's find someone to talk to so that we can be the best people we can be for us. Thanks for listening.